as you could tell by the thumbnail, we're going to be making this beautiful number right here. We're going to get as far as we can get on it. And then if we have to continue, we will. Okay. So I should prep this before I um, hit go, but we're going to make this beautiful little number right here. I had to make this for a custom order for a customer, but, and I was going to do that live. However, the girl was running low on black thread and I didn't want to run out. So we will be using an off-color thread tonight. Um, I'm going to do a little replica of this for you. And let me show you what it looks like on. Yeah, let's see what it looks like on. Come over here, Lucy. Come over here, Lucy. Lucy, Lucy, she's shy, but she's going to come on in and show you her underwear. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's a three-part a three part cup, okay, sheer on the top. And it has a floating core, okay? So this is a floating cup designed here. How it differs with a full cradle is that the, usually you'll see a band that goes all the way around the rib cage and the cuts just kind of sit inside of it. But this is a floating cup design, okay? And we have it on a leotard band. Now, don't laugh at Lucy's booty. Don't laugh at her booty. She doesn't have very much, so we added some in the back. <laughs> okay, so um, this is a leotard band that um, she's wearing, okay? It has nice coverage in the back. And of course, as the sizes go up, the band gives more coverage just depending on what you need. Now, what's really interesting about this, because she's got sheer parts and, you know, all of that, right? She's unlined, meaning she has no padding. Most people think, oh, this is not going to be a very supportive bra, but it's quite the opposite. She is super supportive, especially for large-breasted women, right? Yes. Like these fabrics, they're sheer, but they're very, very strong. And I also use layering. Okay, bye-bye, Lucy. Bye-bye, Lucy. I also use layering to uh, help with not only you know, stabilizing the, the uh, fabrics and things like that, but also to, you know, make nice clean finishes on the inside so that you don't have any edges rubbing against your breast tissue and all of that. But like I said, this is meant for a wide range of boobs. Okay. I know this because I'm a customer. I'm a customer. Okay. What we're going to do is jump right in because we got a lot to cover tonight. I'm going to try to get through this. Um, and what I want to do first is show you all of the material. Let's take a look at the materials. All right. So we have our main fabric okay this is your outer cup this is your inner cup we have the gore which is like i mentioned is a separate piece and here's the upper cup okay and it's made of a very sheer nylon but very very strong there we go okay yeah so it's made of a very sheer nylon but it's very strong very strong and here is our little petite ruffle that's going to line the neckline and the bottom of the gore let's see maybe better on this camera let's see here how about that? Oh, much better. Okay, so she's a bit stretchy. Okay, we have our rings and slides. Rings, slides. Okay, right. And then uh, we also have, um, in addition to um, our main fabric, we use um, some bridge lining, which is a very strong um, uh, mesh also, non-stretch mesh that we'll use to line the inside of the cup at the lower half of the cup. And I also, because this fabric is, um, you know, stretchy or whatever, I want to stabilize it as much as possible. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and done this prior to, so in the interest of time, but you can see all I've done is layered that particular, layer the lower pieces with some of the uh, fabric that I'm using actually on the upper cup as well. Okay. We have our, our band. It's made out of a um, power mesh. Okay. Very strong, very strong. Okay. And let's see here. All right, we have our elastics. Okay, so we've got two sizes, two sizes here. One is the thinner one is for the top portion of the band. The lower portion of the band will be done with finished with the um, the wider one. Okay, and they are very strong as well. Okay, and these are our elastics for the shoulders. Okay, elastics for the shoulders. That's how it looks. It's plush on one side. Shiny on the other. You can see one here is plush and one shiny. Okay. That. This is an underwire bra. So we've got underwire channel. It's plush as well. It's here. So this is how this works. Okay. So it's going to go into the underwire, it's going to go in like that. And we have full coverage wires. Okay. Very sturdy. Very, very sturdy. Okay. And our hook and eye. Okay. So in this case, this is a petite size. Uh, my customer is, she's got larger boobs for her, um, for her body size. Uh, but she is about a 28 in rib cage and her cup size is like a double D. 
So now that we've seen all of the supplies, and I think we have, I'm going to clear these just so that the surface is clean and we can get started. Okay, so we're going to start with the up with the cup. All right, we'll work on the cup first. Okay. So this is your outer cup, your inner cup, and this is the center front seam. Okay, and once again, your upper cup is here. All right. So first thing we're going to do is and these together. Okay. <laughs> Do we have any bra makers out there? Is everybody new to bra making? Are you thinking about it? And, you know, maybe just haven't taken the leap yet? Let me know. Let the girl know. I would love to help you along your way, your travails in terms of bra making. It can be really, really fun. Um, and the name of this bra that we're making is called Amber Ona Wright. And the reason why my um, styles have full names is because I give every component a name. Uh, so when I design, I design them modularly so that um, customers can mix and match components. Okay, so we're also going to sew the um, center front seam of the lining. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin that as well. So my show is normally in the morning, guys, but, you know, hey, I just I was running a little bit late and uh, I was really going to wait until the morning to do it. But I was like, oh, let's just go ahead and knock it out. Right. Maybe I'll make some new friends in the process. Okay, just making sure I got a right and a left here. See. And our seam allowances are going to be a quarter inch. They are one quarter inch. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and sew those together. Just pull this, push this out of the way. Let me keep my coffee out of the way. Let's get everything organized here. All right, so let's go ahead and start here. So you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Once again, I'm just gonna sew here. Okay, there we go. And I'm doing just a regular straight stitch, one quarter inch from the edge. Of course, I need to wind about it. I should prepare that ahead of time. It's beginning of summer, guys. What are you sewing? What are, what are your um, plans for um, sewing? Let me know in the chat. Are you planning on doing something exciting? Hopefully you can see what I'm doing fairly um, clearly here. I'm sewing down the center seam at one quarter of an inch. One more. I think I'm going to wind it up right after this. So that it doesn't catch me off. Let's see here. Awesome. Okay, so now we have. This is basically our lower cup sewn together. This is the center. This is the outer. Okay. Like that. Same as for these. Okay. 
All right. All right. So now what I'm going to do is attach. This is the upper. This is the upper cup. Okay. Hard to see. A little bit difficult to see. Um, here and this is the lower part that's going to attach to the lower part of the cup here. Okay. So I'm going to basically sandwich this. Okay. I made a little mark for myself, a little notch. Okay. And I'm going to push the seam allowance towards the um, the side cup or outer cup. Line that up right there. Okay. And I'm going to also take, this is the lining that we just did, okay? It's made of a sheer um, mesh. Um, it's um, non-stretch. And I also use this in the bridge, okay? It's very, very, very strong. So let's get the right one. So it's gonna be right sides together. So I'm basically sandwiching the upper cup between the two layers here. Sometimes I would, um, you know, hand stitch these in place to base them, uh, but in the interest of time and for speed, I'm, I'm going to skip that step. I'm just going to go ahead and stitch straight after pinning. So we are sipping on Irish coffee tonight. What are you sipping? Let me know in the chat and let me know where you're tuning in from. I would love to know. And also let me know if you um, currently are uh a seamstress or so is it? And which is the right one? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Which is the right one? Let's see. Let me make sure you can see my face here. Okay. Let's see what I'm doing. Yes. Hmm. So bra making has been pretty much the um my life for the last 10 years um, and designing basically and making for, um, you know, of course it was born out of my own issues, <laughs> you know, having larger breasts. Okay. It's not easy to find bras. And when you do find them, they are awful. Okay? They are nude, black and white. And, you know, having had the Victoria's Secret experience, meaning in terms of the colors, it's like a, it's like a candy store in there. You can't go back to that. Right. Now, I never had real luck in Victoria, but it was always nice. I'd always come out with some lotion, <laughs> some lotion or I have some really good ones too. Some lotion or, you know, um, a trinket of some kind, but never, never um, a bra that fit me. So, yes. And so, yeah, it was born out of that. And then it kind of grew from there. I really, I, then I started working with uh, ladies who um, had breast cancer and, you know, I got to tell you that it, that was the most and is the most gratifying part of all of this. You know, just seeing how the posture changes, how the attitude changes and, you know, just their faces light up because they are just so thankful to have something that's not only beautiful, but just makes them feel normal again. You know, that is definitely the most gratifying part of what I do. And I'm coming full circle with this, you know, and now I really want to build a community of women who kind of want to learn how to do this. Okay. If, you know, not for yourself, but maybe as a business, um, I, you know, I have a passion for all of that, for business and everything. Um, I'm an MBA um, and I just love, 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 love business, everything business, especially those who I love the launching part of it. So so excited to help and to um, share this with others. So I hope that you can hear me okay. I know that sometimes my mic might be cutting out. I just want to make sure it's not. Yes. So I'm so excited to be here doing this online live with you guys tonight. We'll try to get through the whole thing. We'll definitely try to do that. And of course, if you have any questions about anything, you know, just, you know, type it in the chat. I'll make sure to do a, a, a chat check. <laughs> okay. So now I've basically pinned uh, the upper. So I've got the um, inside. This is my lining. This is the main fabric. Can you see what I'm doing here? Hold on. Okay. So this is the lining. This is the main fabric. And this is the upper cup here on the inside. Okay. And I just wanted to make sure that my seam allowance is facing the outer cup. I'm going to stitch here one quarter inch from the edge. Yes. Yes. Oh. 
Anybody got plans for the summer? What's going on? What's going on? I, I live vicariously through people. I work too much. Yeah, so as I said about this um, bra, it, um, it's a three cup, three um, part cup. Okay. I love the little um, ruffle that is um, on the neckline. And um, it's petite enough that it doesn't really like show through your curls or anything like that. So let's get this part done too. Sure. I'm gonna try to get this done. All in one in one show. And I don't know if you've seen like the little ruffle panties that I have on the um on, on my channel. Uh, those are very, very popular. I think I'm gonna do a show doing those as well. Um let me know. Um if you're interested in that, I'm happy to like do that as well. Very happy to do that. As well. okay. okay, so now we've got those done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is where we are. Let's see here. Okay, so as you can see, this is what we've done here. See it better on that side. Okay. All right. So now, so what I really um, hate is bras that have um, any kind of free-flowing edges on the inside. So I um, make sure that um, in lining these that we don't have that situation. Okay. So what we're going to do is like a little flip. Let's just make sure this is all in the right way. Yes. We're going to do like a little flip to ensure let me just make sure i'm doing this right though okay let's just make sure here so what we're going to do is take the raw edges from the lining and we're going to attach them to the raw edges of the um the main cup okay let me, i just always have to double check this make sure i'm putting it on the right side so that it lays flat on there let me just do a quick little pin and double check that okay let's just see that's the way we want it done. Okay, very good. All right. So, did I do that properly? Yes. Okay. So, all I'm doing is aligning the seam. This, this is the center seam from the actual lining and from the main fabric. Okay. So, I'm going to align them down that center seam, center front seam there. And that center front seam is not like a... Um, you know, vertical seam, it actually is slanted um, in the design as well. Okay, so I'm just laying it on top of it, on top of the center seam, and I'm going to put a stitch to hold it in place. And I can't really stitch it all the way to the top. I'm just going to go as far as I can. And then when I do my top stitching, that'll take care of the, um, the portion that is not, that I couldn't cover here. Okay, so just like that. Awesome. All right. So I've got that one pinned. I'm going to go ahead and get this one pinned properly, too, just so I can uh, stitch them both. Okay, so let's see. So all I'm doing, once again, is I'm taking the center seam from the main fabric and the lining, and I'm just putting them together. Okay. So you have two options. You can put it on that side, on the inner cup side or the outer cup side. And um, Instead of me just looking at, is it the inner or the outer, I, I, um, I'm just doing a test pin and then checking to see if it's on the right side. I'm turning it right side out. All right, so let's go ahead and, so I'm just gonna do a um, kind of a base stitch. It doesn't have to be, right? So my um, stitch is about four millimeters long. And I'm just tracing the stitch there in the center. Okay. All right, so that's one down. Okay. Just 
tracing over the seam, the original center seam. And this just locks all of the layers in place together inside the cup. So as you can see here, see here, it's just stitched along here. And there's still like an opening here. And I'm gonna take care of that when um, I am doing the top stitching. All right, so the next step is we're going to turn it right side out. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's perfect. Turning this right side out as well. These are just my hand stitches. Okay, so now we have two cups. You can see here, right? Two cups. And just so you can see, let me um, switch over to this and you can see how, what I mean. So now all of, so that's your center line there, your center um, seam. All of the seam allowances are headed in the same direction and it's on, it's encased inside of the lining. It's between the cups, right? So you can see here and it's locked here. All of the layers are locked on that seam line. Okay. So now I'm going to top stitch two rows. Okay. I'm going to top stitch along here. So across the cup and down the cup, across the cup and down the cup. I'm gonna put two rows in each direction. And I'm doing this roughly uh, a little shy of an eighth of an inch. All right, and I'm going to use a, a little bit longer stitch. I've been using a two and a half millimeter stitch, but now I'm going to use meter stitch okay and I'm just holding um making pulling the layers uh so that they're nice and smooth and taut okay um, as I'm stitching okay. just looking at the chat just to make sure if you're here, say hello. I see you. I see you. I know you're here. I know you're here. Just say hi. Now, normally I would trim a little bit on those seam allowances prior to debulk the area a little bit or braid it. Um, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. So I've got one row of stitching there. Okay, and I'm just gonna do uh, the center front seam now. I'm gonna stitch that in place and I'm gonna make sure that, um, as you can see, because I left the top open up here, so I just wanna make sure that these are lining up at the top where they're not attached. See, it's not attached here. It's not attached here, but it's attached a little bit farther down. Okay, so once again, I'm doing this about just a little bit shy of an eighth of an inch from the top, from the seam. Okay. So now you can see I've got one row in each direction. Okay, I'm going to do that for the other cup too. And that second row, I'm going to change my needle position. So I just want to make sure I get everything that's coming, having the cups look alike. Okay. Smooth. D-Dub said, hey, let's go. Yes, let's go. We're, we're, we're off and we're going, okay? <laughs> okay. All right, so we're almost done with that first row of stitching here at the top. And I'm going to take one going down the center seam. Get this. All right, so just making sure that 
those seam allowances are on top of each other. And get this down to right. And I'm just holding the um, the layers a little bit taut as I'm going um, as I'm making the seam because I just want it to be nice and smooth as much as possible. As nice and smooth as possible. I want to go past my um okay all right so now i've got two so now i'm going to go ahead and do the second row of stitching okay okay if this is a bra that you're interested in making it's really not hard to do it's really not hard to do um uh, just change my needle position now I'm just going to move it over about a millimeter. Let's see, where are we right now? Let me go back to two, three. That's good. Okay. So this is going to give it a nice, like, little double roll of stitching. Okay. Kind of like the denim effect. Okay. And it's also helping to enclose those um, dry edges. Okay. It's creating a casing on the inside. One down. Do that. Okay, so we've got two rows there now. Okay, so I'm gonna do that for the um, seam going down the front as well. Okay. And these are just these are just style. Uh, when you're making it yourself, you don't have to have these designs. I just like them. So I'm going to do this one. Almost has like that little, like that uh, casual look and feel, like denim kind of look and feel. I like that with the plaid. Second row there. So here. So what types of bras do you like to wear most? Do you like them foam or no foam? I like I like no foam. Um, I do like foam sometimes because for modesty, right? It helps to, you know, hide the nips. Um, but I love these for comfort and for and they come they um conform, you know, to your, your shape. They create a shape, a, a beautiful shape too, but um, it's like, um, they're much more moldable than um, foam bras, unless you're using a very, very light foam. Um, okay. All right, so now, let's see, let's see here. So we've encased the, you can see there with the stitching, we've encased the, the actual seam allowance inside. So it's nice and smooth and clean here. You might, you can see it here, but it's not really um, touching the skin. It's been it's inside the casing there. All right. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and put on our elast, our, our um, petite ruffle. Okay. Let's do that. So this is the ruffle that we're about to put on. Okay. I love this. It's so pretty. And of course, it's smaller than the actual. Um, than the actual cup line because we want it to, it creates a nice little, um, um, it, it creates, somebody's calling me while I'm trying to, um, someone's calling me. Yeah, so it creates a nice, um, almost custom feel when around the neckline because it kind of, um, you know, collapses to, you, you know, as much length as you need. I know a lot of ladies that have issues with, um, you know, the, the upper cup or the neckline being too large, you know, and it gapes and that sort of thing. So this actually gives you kind of a, a, a nice little custom um, look and feel. All right, so I'm going to use a, um, I'm going to use a zigzag stitch for this, okay? And the zigzag is going to be, let's see, it's going to be three wide, three millimeters wide and um, four, um, or long. Okay, so I'm going to apply this so that the ruffled edge is 
facing towards the cup. So the, the actual smooth edges are going to line up together just like this. Okay. And we're going to take it. And so we're going to stretch it so that it fits all the way to the end here. Okay. Like that. So I'm just going to zigzag this in place. And when I do, I'm zigzagging so that the when when the needle goes to the left, it's actually going to hit right just under the actual um, ruffle. Okay, so that when I turn when I flip it on the inside, it looks nice and smooth and neat. Okay. All right. So let's just get close to this. All right. And I'm going to pull the threads a little bit just to kind of help because this is very um, sheer fabrics, right? And sometimes the needle can push it down. So I'm just going to. Pull it so it meets. Okay. All right. I just like the nice, clean look and feel of having a matching thread. Okay. So this is, um, and it doesn't match in this case, but at least it's black-ish, okay? <laughs> all right, so, um, all right, so that one's done. Now I'll go ahead and do the other, and then when I flip it over um, and stitch the other side. So I basically stitched the inner part of the, the elastic. Can you see the stitches there? Okay, so that's where my zigzag is. And so when I fold it so that it's the right side of the ruffle is, so that the ruffle ex is exposed, that way it's a nice, clean, even finish there. To the ruffle, I mean. It's plush, the elastic portion of it, that hits the skin is plush on both sides. So I'm just going to tuck it till it meets the edge of the neckline. And so I'm going to do everything to keep it nice and straight. see the stitches there. All right, so now the next thing I'm going to do is fold it to the inside so that I'm going to fold it to the inside. So this is this is the wrong side of it. This is the right side here. Okay, so I'm going to fold it so that we put the second, the uh, lower half of the elastic. We're going to attach that next. Okay, so this time I'm going to have the um, zigzag go on the opposite side. And because I don't want to change out top and bottom threads, and I've got two different colors in here, I'm just going to, I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm going to stitch it from the wrong side just so that we keep time. And we're not, um, I'm just going to put in a pin here. Okay, let's just start it with that. Just to make sure it stays in place. All right. Okay, I'm pulling it. Um, I'm pulling the, uh, let's see, I'm pulling the um, upper, I'm encouraging it to be nice and flat. And the pin in just to get it going because remember this is not exactly the neckline's length it is actually shorter so um, I have tension on it when I'm initially putting it on so I want to make sure that I get it to the edge I'll take the needle out pull the pin out okay once again I'm encouraging the upper cup to lay flat I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so 
This is the underside. Okay, you can see. Okay, you can see there's two rows of stitching, one on um, both sides of the length of the elastic, and this is what it looks like on the right side. Okay, all right. So, so we are done with the cups for now. And I'm going to take a sip of gel. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Okay, so now we have done our cups, at, at least um, to the point that we need to. The next thing that I want to do is work on the gore, okay, which is that little tiny triangle that sits in the middle of your chest. Okay, and whenever you're wearing a bra, this little guy needs to lay flat on your chest, okay? If it's not laying flat on your chest, then there's a fit issue, okay? So that means either your cup is too, large, too small, your band could be too loose, okay? Um, so there's a number of things, but just to give you a couple of things to troubleshoot. Okay, so our um, gore is also, it also has, let me show you on the first one. Our gore also has trim, right? The, the ruffle trim on it, okay? So this is the part we're doing now. Right. So I'm just going to pin the the little ruffle in the same way we did the uh, neckline, so that the um, edges line up, the flat edges. Okay. okay. And then I'm just going to do a little straight stitch to hold this in place, okay? I need to get some more pins. These things are crooked. So I'm going to bend. All right, so I'm just going to use a straight stitch on this, okay? And I'm just going to run it right along, right underneath the ruffle, okay? Because that is actually the same seam allowance as um, um, the rest of the bra, quarter inch. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And with these little pieces, sometimes you have to just kind of encourage it to move through because they're so tiny, right? Okay, so. Okay. All right, you guys, you just want to hang out in the bushes. You don't want to say hello. Come down from the bushes and say hello. Please come down from the bushes. Okay. All right, so. So this is where we are, okay? So I have attached it, attached the little ruffle, okay? And now what we're gonna do, so this is that bridge um, um, mesh, it's a stabilizer. And I like to double these because this is a high stress area. I like to double it. It's very strong, it's strong enough to um, only use one, but I always like to double these. All right, so right sides together like that. And of course these don't have the right and wrong side, but right sides together, I'm gonna pin it in place. I like these floating cup bras as a variation to the full cradle ones. The full cradle ones definitely um, have, uh, they do offer, a, a, you know, a little bit more stability in terms of um, like, you know, your breasts are a little bit less able to move around um, over your ribcage. Uh, but with these, I mean, it doesn't make it, it actually it does kind of feel a little bit more, you feel a little more in control um, or controlled by it. But these are still very, very, very supportive bras with the floating cups. It's just a, a little style change. Just make sure this is good. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to stitch along here, one quarter inch, and then up here, one quarter inch. Okay, straight stitch. Okay. 
here. Okay, so that's the lower half. And I'm just going to run a stitch across the top here. Okay. All right. So that's done. I'm just going to clip these edges. Put these uh, extra threads off. It's coming together quite nicely. Okay, so this is where we are. So I'm just going to flip this right side out. <clears throat> to expose our beautiful little ruffle on the edge there. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is um, pin along these the sides, and I'm going to put a base stitch there just to hold that in place um, so that we can attach it to the cups. All the way down to the sides and the bottom. Just making sure I get all of the layers, okay? okay. Do the same for the other side. Stick a little pin in there. Stick one here too. All right, and I'm just gonna. Actually, I'm going to keep it at the same. Um, I'm not going to do a base, but I'm but I'm going to actually stitch it a little. Well, no, I will do a base. Okay, so I'm going to run a little stitch along the sides, and it's temporary, technically. I, but I usually don't take these out unless it's seen. So that's one side. The other side. So this is how we are so far. You can see I've um, attached the edges with a little stitch. This is just to hold it in place. It's so small. We just want to make sure that it's, it doesn't give you problems when you're trying to stitch it to the cups and you get all of the layers because the stability comes from the, the, the underside. <laughs> We now have that completed. Okay, so we're stitched through. Whole, it's stitched through all layers on on um, both sides of the gore. Okay, now so I want to attach the cord to the cups. Okay, so when I'm looking at the cup. There is a side that's rounded, and then there's a side that has a little bit of a slant, and this is the underarm, okay? This is where the underwire goes all the way up through here to the neckline, okay? So we're going to attach the gore to the center part of the cup so that it's even with the actual neckline of the fabric. Like this. And when I'm doing these, because it um, is, a very small piece and it needs to be straight or attached to both sides of the, um, let's make sure this is all good, okay. That it's attached to both cups evenly. So I run a base stitch down these, down this um, first on both sides. And then once I have it where I want it, then I, um, then I run a permanent stitch. I'm going to switch back to blue, I think, too. Let me just make sure. And this is just a base stitch right now. Or a, you know, um, temporary stitch. I 
I did backstitch on that because I just want, I don't want it to come off while I'm, you know, futzing around with it. Okay, so this is what we're looking like so far. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to, and I do have a little notch here just kind of showing me where that's falling and I'm gonna to try to get the other side in the same place. Okay, so this is, this is the underarm and this is the center. Okay, and when I'm actually attaching this, I'm making certain to run it all the way down until it runs out of seam allowance, okay? So the tails of the gore also are attached all the way through. Okay, so now I'm gonna run a little stitch down here, see if we've got it. As you can see, I'm stitching all the way down the tail, okay, till it runs out. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let me show you what that's looking like. See, it looks nice and even. So now I'm going to run permanent stitches, tracing the stitches I just created. to the other side. Okay. I'm stopping before it starts to stitch the, um, the ruffle. So now we have our gore attached. Okay, looking good, looking good. Yes. All right, so this is what we're looking like right now, guys. We are getting it done, okay? So it's starting to take shape, right? Definitely needs some cleanup. All right, so for our next step, we're going to apply the lower part of the um, elastic, we're gonna apply the lower elastic um, or the, elastic to the lower part of the band. Okay, so that wider pico elastic, that's what we're gonna do next. Any questions so far? None? No questions? Okay. All right, so that's a little bit cleaner. Okay, looking good so far. Looking good. All right, so now what we're going to do is the band, okay? So this is our um, band, and I put everything, sorry for the noise, I put everything in a little baggie so that I could free up my space. There we go. All right, so, all right, so your um, power mesh, uh, Sometimes has the right and wrong side, you know, um, in, in this case, it's really not that noticeable, okay? So here's what we're going to do, just making sure we have a left and a right. So now we're going to apply the elastic in very much the same way as we did the, the ruffle so that um, the straight edges line up and we're gonna zigzag right underneath the, um, the scallop, okay? And I'm using a zigzag that is three millimeters wide and four uh, millimeters long. 
And you may find on your machine that um, you need a different one because it really varies the machine. Just depending on the fabric that you're using. It's a little bit thicker. Sometimes it comes out, um, you know, it, it varies. Make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, do the other one just like that. Okay, so this is the right side up, and I've got the plush side up. Okay. And my um, zigzags are occurring right under the scalloped edge. Okay, so that if I turn it under, it'll be very, very clean. And the plush side will be on the skin. The plush side of the plastic will be on the skin. Okay. All right, so this is where we are. Okay, that's what that's looking like. Now I'm going to fold it to the inside like that. And now I'm going to zigzag on and off over here. Okay. And once again, I'll be pulling. And the reason I'm doing it from the other underside is because my, my, my matching thread is there. So I'm just going to encourage it to lay flat. I'm not pulling it because I don't want it to be warped. I'm just making sure it's nice and tight. Okay, so that one's done. Let me go to this other one. Side. Nice and clean. Okay. How are we doing? How are we doing? Still with me? <laughs> you don't want to say hello? Don't be scared. Okay, so now we're going to attach those the wings to, to the cups, okay? So remember we have a little slant here. So the wire actually starts. So the wings actually get attached down here. A lot of people want to attach it up here, but it doesn't belong there. It starts here, okay? So right sides together. Just going to, pin. Right sides together, we're gonna pin. along here through all of the layers all of the layers okay and this design has the pico edge ending right at the center seam okay and go ahead and pin the other side as well okay so right there Making sure we get through all of the layers. Okay, and ending right at the center seam once again. Okay, straight stitch is what we're going to use here, and we're going to do a quarter inch medium. Okay, so let's start that. And do I want to change? Bear with me. It only takes a second. Okay. Straight stitch, one quarter inch. Okay. Going around the cup. Ending right at the same the center front seam. So those are the sides now. It's looking like a bra. 
that far now. Okay, so now we've got wings on there. <laughs> Not only does a red bull give you wings, Dion gives you wings. <laughs> okay, this is what we're looking like. All right, so that's the wing attached. Okay, so now what we're going to do is the next step will be attaching the um, attaching the, the channel. So here's one, here's the other. Okay, so this is what the um, the channel is, what the underwire sits in. So that we can see that better. Okay. This is it's plush on the side that sits on the skin. And you can see there's a little bit of ribbing on the side that is not exposed once it's applied in the bra. Okay. So let's go ahead and attach this. Now to attach this, I'm also going to um one more thing I want to explain. Uh let's see. Okay. So when this is sitting inside the bra in this design, okay, in this design the channel will fit inside the cup like this. So it's the edge of the cup, okay, turned in towards the cup. So when we are stitching it in place, we're going to stitch it from the side of the wing, okay, and like this, so that when it folds inside, it covers the extra, all of the um, raw edges, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to do this in a, um, a larger stitch in case I have to move it. Okay, and let's just so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm also gonna move my needle position all the way over to the left. This is just kind of how I like to do it. And so what I'm actually going to do is place the edge of this just over the stitch so that I'm really going to be tracing that stitch line um, so that it's not visible. So it's gonna sit in there just like that. Okay, so it's gonna hide the stitch of the wing. Okay. So we're going to start here, a little bit lower. We're going to start lower because um, we still have to apply the elastic here. And the elastic here is about, um, you know, three-eighths of an inch, maybe a little bit larger. You can include the scallops. All right, so I'm going to align this in here just like that. That's it. So I'm looking to align the left edge of that. Um, and I'm, this is the plush side that's showing. I'm looking to align the um, left edge on top of the stitch, and I'm going to stitch right on top of that stitch. I'm going to trace it. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, one more step. One more step before I do that. Because in this design, what I forgot to do is this. So in this design, we have um, the we have the scallop edge all, all around here. So it looks like one continuous piece, but it's actually um, different materials. All right, so let's apply that part first. And then... Things. Just make sure we have the right ones here. All right, so let's make sure I put these in the wrong pieces. Okay, so that's for the top of the band. So it's usually it's those pieces here. Okay, yeah. Make sure they're definitely the same. Yes. All right, so here's what I'm going to do to up to um, apply that decorative detail. So disregard what I started. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start right here where the band is attached and I'm gonna run this Pico elastic to about right there, which is where the gore is. Okay, so you can see that's the gore and the band. So I'm really just applying a decorative detail. And honestly, it has more function than just um, decoration. Um, when the wire is sitting directly on your rib cage, when you go to sit down, it could be maybe a little bit irritating. So this actually provides a little barrier that helps to soften up the uh, wire, okay? coming into contact with you. Now, the wire doesn't directly come into contact with you. It just is, um, it just is, you know, because it's a hard thing um, sitting on your um, your cage and, you know, when you're sitting down and things like that, it could be irritating. All right, so let's just stitch this in place. And I'm stitching right underneath, I'm stitching right underneath the, um, the peacock, okay? Doesn't matter which direction this is, this goes on because it's all gonna be covered. Meaning the, um, the plush side of the elastic. It's not going to come in contact with your skin. The um, underwire channel is going to cover this. Okay. Now, if this were a um, if this were a full cradle bra, 
then um, this would be one piece underneath here, but I have to piece it because of the bloating um, gore. Okay, so this is the right side. I'm exposing the wrong side of the, the gore here. So it's going in like this. Okay, just like that. And it's gonna end just above the edges of the gore there. And I'm not gonna backstitch or anything like that because it is going to be held in place when I attach the under the I almost forgot that sucker. All right. So this is what we're looking like. Let me just show you in case that was a little bit confusing. Okay. So now all I did was see this is the right, the wrong side, and this is the elastic. I um, aligned the edges of the elastic and attached it here with a straight stitch. Okay. It's just holding it in place. Okay. So now let's get back to the our regular only scheduled um, program. Okay. Which is the underwire channel. All right. So we're gonna pick up from where we left off attaching it here, and you'll see it's going to run right along where that elastic is. Okay, it's going to cover it, right? And then it's going to go all the way up the cup to the neckline. Okay, so let's get back to that. And I have this set at about four and a half um, millimeters in terms of the stitch, and I just move my needle all the way to the left. I like to align it there. Okay, so... So you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to follow all the way along here, covering up my stitching. Okay, running it all the way up to. All right. And when I get to the neckline, I'm going to actually stop right before it gets to the. I don't want the channel running up the ruffle. We want that to stay nice and fluid and, and not rigid. Okay. So, let me just, so this is where the, I've attached it. So now you can no longer see my stitching running along the, the wing or even where I just attached that pico. Okay, and then all the way up here. And so I stopped right before it gets to the ruffle. Okay, because I'm gonna end up clipping that off. All right, so now let's put the other one on. Okay, so I'm attaching this. Okay, I'm attaching again. This is the wrong side, which is this, the part that has that little those ridges on it. Okay, a little bit hard to see here, but you can kind of see it, right? And the plush side is is up. I'm just going to put this one just right above, since I'm starting on this end. I'm not going to start my stitches um, at the ruffle. It's going to be just below the ruffle. Once again, I'm trying to cover all of the stitching that I've done to attach the core, the pico, everything. So the channel just kind of finishes all of that, hides all of the guts. And once again, when I get to the edge, I'm going to stop shy of the top about three eighths of an inch to allow for the um, elastic on the top or the top of the band. We apply the top of the band. Okay. So this is free, about three eighths of an inch there, and all of my stitching is now covered all the way through. Okay, so now my next step is to trim. Okay, and I'm not going to do a great job at it. I'm going to do some just for the sake of time, I'm not um, taking too long. Okay, let me use my little scissors to see if they will work for me. Okay, so what we're going to do is basically grade along here, trim it so that it's nice and clean underneath the channel. Okay, so all of that extra um, pico elastic and the, the seam allowance, all of that gets trimmed. Okay, Let's see if my little scissors can handle this. Gotta be really careful to not cut your channel, to not cut your cup. Okay. 
I may have to use a different pair of scissors when I get here. And I'm not going to do such a great job with this because this one can't need to get through all of the steps. I made it through. Yeah. Okay, so this is not the this is not the um the channel. This is that Pico elastic that we've now reached here. Let's see if we can turn that down. Once again, your channel is hiding all of this, okay? See, where it really makes a difference is when you get to the top here because the top of the cup is sheer, right? So how, however neat or messy you cut it, it's going to show. So that part, you want to take your time and get it somewhat straight. Okay, that's one down. It's not clean, but it's, but it's done, okay? Just for the sake of demonstration. Okay, let's get that other one done, and we can move on. I'm going to put the side too because I don't want to so I can see what's going on here. Okay, let's try it down. Once again, I'm just getting this uh, trimmed down, not, uh, the, not for the purpose of being neat, but for the purpose of demonstration. Okay, so normally I would use. Um, a different pair of scissors uh, to do this. I have some really, really sharp ones that would work so much better, but I have to definitely pay attention to how fast I do it because it can easily slice through the cup or the channel. Okay. How are we doing? I hope that you are enjoying the show. If you could, please uh, give me a like. That would be awesome. Okay, we've reached the end. All right, very good. Okay, so now, all right, so typically I would take this over to my double needle machine, but because most people don't have that, I'm just going to do one row of stitching um, as you would do with your sewing machine at home. You can do two rows of stitching, um, much like what we do, um, like what we did here, like what we did here, but um, you have to really work to get that nice and clean and straight, okay? So I'm just gonna do one row of stitching. And okay, so now I'm going to run a stitch, just one, um, because this is this is a treatment that you can do um, on a home machine. So all I'm doing here is folding over the, um, the the channel, right? And stitching along the opposite end to hold it in place, okay? So, and you can also run two stitches, okay? You can run two lines of stitches, but I'm gonna do one just for the sake of demonstration here. Okay, there we go. All right, so this actually just holds the um, the channel in place. Okay, there we go. Let me switch this so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so you can kind of see here what's happening. So it's just a nice little top stitch to hold it in place. Okay. And, you know, you can actually start from the opposite side just to get a sense of where your needle position should be or how you should lay it on the machine. Um, I'm just doing it from, I'm just feeling it. Okay. All right. So my needle is, is uh, placed in the left position. Okay. And I hope that I'm catching it. Okay. <laughs> Okay. 
webinar. And then I'm going to stop right at the um, neckline where just before the uh, ruffle. And once again, I don't want to catch the ruffle in this stitch. So I'm going to trim it right at the ruffle, okay? All right, so this is how we're looking. Just like that, okay? And so we caught. We caught the, the channel. All right, so let's do the other side. Okay, so I'm going to fold it towards the cup, just like that. Okay, making sure it's nice and tight. And you just have to find the spot on your machine for aligning it, okay? This may take a little bit of practice. This may take a little bit of practice. Trust me, once you get it, you'll be so um, elated. Okay. We are heading into the home stretch, guys. Okay, once again, I'm going to stop right before, I'm going to stop kind of where I started at first, just making sure to have enough clearance for my finishing elastic right at the, the um, for the top of the band, okay? All right, so this is how we're looking. That's actually how we're looking here. So far, so good. Look at that. Okay, so you can, if you like, put another row of stitches. Typically on my double needle, that's what I would get here. Two rows, just like a, what you see here. That's how that would look. Let me um, go to this camera here instead so you can see it better. Let's see how the double, the double row. Okay. And so you can do that. Um, but, you know, the, the, the issue with that is trying to keep it very um, similar and, and neat and straight. That takes time and practice. Okay. All right. So that's that. All right. So now what we're going to do is... We're getting very, very close. I'm going to trim. I'm going to trim off the um, excess here in the middle of the uh, bra, the excess channel. Okay. Now, typically, um, that would be something I would do after I have closed it. But I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm now going to close off the channel at the center. Okay. Right here at the center. So what I'm going to use is a bar tack, okay? And what a bar tack is, it actually runs like, um, it's it looks like a railroad track, okay? So it's two straight lines of straight stitches, and then it goes back and does like what um, would look like a, a buttonhole type of stitch, a satin stitch, okay? So I'm going to close here and here where the um, the casing is, okay? So this is what that looks like, you see? So you use bar tacks to close off these things, especially with high stress areas. And you also use it for attaching your straps and things like that. Okay, so this requires a... my bow because um, when you put the wires in it gets a little bit more tough to put the bows the, your little bows at the center so I'm gonna go ahead and do the bow I'm just cleaning up okay okay I'm just cleaning up Okay, so now I'm going to actually, now typically, <laughs> I would typically make sure I have black um, to um, for the bow. All right, so now I'm going to put the bow on. And I use a, basically a darn stitch. 
a darning stitch to do that, okay? And I like to have my bows, you know, most often people will stitch the bow in the center. I'm gonna do that here because I have um, the wrong color in right now. But um, typically what I would do is I would, just so you can see here, I would place my bow like here in the center and I would um, stitch it kind of under the knot on this side and this side, because that gives it more stability. But what I'm gonna do in this case is just stitch it across the center as you can typically see it. Okay, and that's because I don't have the right color in and it would look a little bit messy to do it that way. So I'm just gonna stitch it right across the knot. Just cleaning up. So now we've got our bow in the center, right in the center. Okay. So now we're going to place the bones in, or what we would typically call the underwires. All right. We are definitely in the home stretch now. Okay. So I'm going to now feed the wires uh, through the, um, the channels. Okay. So when you're doing this, the lower side, usually the colored side, should end up in the center of your um, cup. Okay. So I'm going to feed in starting with that. Make sure you get it inside the channel and not between the channel and the, and the cup, okay? Because that will immediately kill your bra. You will ruin it. Okay, so now that one's in. It's looking more and more like a bra. Okay, so let's do this one. Stick it in the right place. I just want to make sure. Oh. Oh, let's go back a little bit. There we go. All right. Pushing it through a brand new channel can be a little bit tough on the hands. <laughs> okay. Okay, very good. Now we have fed it through and it's looking almost done. So we've got it. Um, inside here. Now what I'm going to do is the um, elastic at the top of the band and the underarm. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is this part right here. All right, so this elastic here is going to be applied in very much the same way as all the others. Okay, but I'm taking care to make sure that the plush side is up. Okay, so it's going to go on like this. I'm going to tug a little bit from here to here just to give it a little tension and then it's going to be flat the rest of the way, okay? This is the underarm and then the top, okay? All right, so I'm gonna use a zigzag once again, okay? Three long, four, I'm sorry, three wide, four long. Okay, once again, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start here at the very top. This time I am gonna start including the um, elastic, the um, ruffle, okay? Because I wanna catch that. And I'm making the, I'm placing the elastic straight edge along, I'm aligning it with the straight edge of the actual cup, okay? And I'm going to make that stitch right underneath the scalp. Just going to tug a little bit, give it a little tension. And this again is just to give it a more of a custom feel, right? In case um, you know uh, someone is a little bit smaller in this area, you give it a little bit more of a custom feel. All right. So from here forward, we're going to just do a flat treatment. Okay. So no tension at all. Same for the other side. This time starting at the band. I'm feeling for the plush side. It should be facing up, right side up, plush side up. And flat. No tension. I didn't trim this. I should have trimmed this off. I'm going to do that now. I don't want to catch that. 
Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to apply some tension. Not much. Just enough to give it a little bit of a gather. And I'm going to include the, the ruffle. All right, so this is how we're looking. Like that, okay. On both sides. Now I'm going to fold it in. All right, let's get rid of some of this stuff. So now I'm just going to trim off this little excess here in the corner. That's just the ruffle sticking out. Okay. okay, very good. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is turn it inside and zigzag it from this side, okay? making sure it's nice and flat. And I'll be catching the, um, the ruffle with the stitch. And I'm gonna give it a little tension at the beginning here because I gave it tension at the top. And then just flat, no tension here. and clean so this is why i like the colors to match because i like a nice clean finish okay so this is where we are all right so i'm going to trim this the extra all right trimming the extra all right so now i'm going to finish off the um the band okay i'm going to finish off the trimming out the band here all right let's go ahead and take care of that and so what's going to go here is the elastic that you uh, use for your um for your strap we also use to trim out the band okay it's going to go like that and then it's going to um hold the um the ring okay so what i like to do here is give myself um a a line to show me where to place it so i'm just going to put a um base stitch here. Okay, I'm going to run one along here to help me just to keep that straight when I'm applying it. So this is just a temporary stitch um, right here, just a temporary stitch to help me uh, position the, um, the trim. So far, this is what we've got. Okay, so far. All right, so now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do a zigzag stitch. This time I want my stitch to be wider because as I'm putting this along this edge, as I'm attaching it here, right? And this is this is the um, the right side up, and this is the right side up. Okay, as I'm attaching this, I'm gonna align the edge with it like that, and then my zigzag, I want it to be wider so it catches most of the um, hem joint. Okay, so the hem line of that. All right, so I'm gonna change this to about four and a half um, wide by four. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna take the edge of that, like this. Just take the edge and align it, just like that. Okay. Fully caught. It's a nice flat finish there too. Okay. So now let's do the other one. Okay. Okay, 
the right side up in both cases. Okay, so the right side of the strap is up and the right side of the band is up. Just cleaning up now. Okay, and I'm going to take out that extra stitch. It's no longer of use to me. Okay, and doing it again here too. Map. All right. So far, so good. Right. So now I'm going to apply my um, rings. Okay. So I'm simply going to, so you can see how nice that's coming out so far, right? Okay, so I'm almost all turned out here. All right, so now I'm going to take my ring and I'm going to feed it through. So it's going to go under, right? I'm going to feed the right side through and I'm going to fold it under. And now I'm going to take and do a, um, do a bar tack right here. Okay. And now I need a bar tack. track across. Okay. And that's how they're looking. Okay, let me do the other one. Okay, so I'm taking the ring okay, and feeding it through. I hate to have these strings hanging. So let's get rid of those. Okay. So, this is the right side. I'm just going to feed the ring through like that. Okay. Like that. All right. So, it's going to do a straight stitch. And it's going to go backward for a straight stitch. And then it's going to run the right track. because that's blue thread. <laughs> All right, and so normally I would just trim these off. Okay. Let's put these threads here. Okay. I hope you're enjoying the video. Please give it a like. Please, your girl is working hard here, okay? She is working hard for the money, okay? All right, so now let's work on the straps, okay? So now we're going to work with the sliders and our straps. So this is the strap. And what I'm gonna do is feed the strap right side up through the center portion of the slider, okay? So that little crossbar that's in the center right there, that's what we're feeding this over. And then we're gonna run a bar tack to, um, to close the loop, okay? So this is what it looks like, like that. Okay, so go ahead and feed it on the other one. Okay. All right, so now bar tack it. This 
one. You can see here, this is how it is. It's just running across the center portion, All right? And when you tack in it, it's um, right sides are on the outside, so wrong sides together of your strap. Gonna clean it up. Gonna clean it up. All right. So now that we have attached the strap to um, the rings or the sliders, sorry, to the straps, now we're gonna slide them through the ringer, the rings. Very easy to do. All right. So from the wrong side of the bra, right? So from the wrong right from the wrong side of the bra. Sorry, from the wrong side of the bra, we're going to feed the strap through, okay? So that your wrong side or the furry side or the plush side is facing up, going into the wrong side of the ring or coming from the wrong side of the bra, okay? So now my wrong sides are exposed. You see that? You can see up here, this is the wrong side. All right, now I'm going to run this through here, through the, through the remaining um, openings here. So I'm going to feed it through this one, go over the center loop, Feed it through this one here. That's the first one right there, okay? And then over the center loop and back through here. Okay, so we're just running it over the center loop. See that? Over the center loop, all right? And I'm just gonna pull it so it's nice and right there. One more time. I'm feeding it from the wrong side into to the, um, towards the front or the right side, okay? My wrong side is up, so I've got the furry side exposed here. Okay, now I'm going to feed it through the uh, remaining loops. All right, so in through here, over the center. If I can get it in there, do it through my fingers. Okay, here we go. All right, so that's that. I'll pull, I'll pull through. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is attach the hook and eye, okay? So this is the hook and eye, right, separated. So what I'm going to do, I would typically input right here my uh, care label. There's no need to do that for this. This is just for demonstration. And so when I apply this, the hooks, Facing outward. Let me trim this really quickly first. Just so that it goes over smoothly. So the hooks are facing outward. So if you have this facing up like this, your hook would be on the outside. So that would be considered your right side. So it just slides in there like that. Okay. And I generally like to do just a little straight stitch to hold it in place. And then, um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to do a little straight stitch just a little bit, because sometimes it can get a little wonky on you in terms of um, losing its position. Okay, you don't need to, you don't need to back stitch this because we're gonna, um, so that's how that's looking so far. Okay, so it's attached. Okay, so this part is nice and smooth. It will be against your skin, and this is where it, what's going to catch the hook, the um, other part of the. Um, of the, of the hooks, hook and eye. Okay, so this is the part that's left. It has the hooks on it. Now I'm going to slide that on so that it's facing the inside. So the hooks will face the inside of the bra. Okay, like that. Just like that. All right. And you could try this with a different foot, like a zipper foot or something like this, but I do it so often, which is my regular foot. Um, right, so I'm just going to, and it may just take an adjustment uh, from your machine to go over those pumps like that. Okay, so now that we have those in place, the final stitch for these will be a zigzag stitch and it'll be a very dense one because there's a lot of stress that gets um, applied here. So, so now I'm just gonna run a zigzag stitch and it's going to be four wide and two long, two millimeters long. So it's a very dense stitch, okay? 
And I use the stitch that I just made as a guide. Now, one more thing I want to mention before we move on. Okay, you see how nice and beautiful that is? Okay, so that's what that looks like. All right, so now there's openings at the top and the bottom. We want to close those with zigzags too, here and here. All right, so um, before I do that part, I'm just going to go ahead and tack the hook part, okay? Using the same stitch that I just used to apply. And I'm using... I'm using my um, first little stitch as a guide to keep it straight. All right, so I'm gonna do this right there. All right, so now this also has openings at the tops and the bottoms. So we're gonna zigzag to close those. So I'm actually going to um, take the width of my stitch down to three, leaving it at two. And now I'm just going to on and off the edge just to, just to close those edges. both sides. So now I'm going to clean it up. Okay. Okay, guys. Let's see. So I'll clean that up. Now let's clean up the side. It can get so messy. It can get so messy. Oh goodness. Okay. All right. So this is where we are, and. I think we're at our last step. Okay, our last step is going to be to attach the straps to the front of the bra, to the cups. I think I deserve another sip, don't you? <laughs> okay, so now it's time to attach. Throw these things away. It's time to attach the straps to. All right, so just follow it along, make sure it's nice and smooth and you don't have any twists in it. And then we're going to attach it just like that. And what we wanna make sure is that when we are attaching it, that we're gonna put bar tacks here and you're gonna do it inside the, the actual sheer portion of the cup, avoiding the, um, the ruffle, okay? So I'm gonna do another bar tack. Straight lines and now they're in a row. One down, one to go. One down, one to go. Okay, once again. I'm just taking, I'm just following the strap on around so that there's no twists in it and I'm tapping it to the cup. I'm in here. Then 
I would also put my branding plates in place as a last step. Guys, guess what? We did it. Let's look at it. Let's look at our beautiful work. This is the bra we just finished. And if you don't believe me, okay, you can see there's the blue. There's a little the um where I applied <laughs> the, the bow. Okay, it's not like my norm. But here's that bra. But here's the one that I used to show you. That one doesn't have the blue dot. And Lulu still has hers on. Hi, Lucy. Lucy still has hers on. See that? So we did it. And she's nice and pretty on the inside. Nice and clean. Nothing sticking out to touch the customer, to rub and irritate. All of these are very clean finishes on the inside. And we are done. We are done. Thank you all so much. I, I so enjoyed having you here. It was a pleasure doing this with you. Again, guys, please subscribe, like the video, like the video. Your girl is working hard for the money. All right. And stay tuned for the next Sojo Live. But how will you know if you don't subscribe? So please subscribe and hit the notification bell and select all to get um, notified whenever I do anything so you don't miss anything. Okay, guys, it was a pleasure. And remember to create something beautiful.